Game of Thrones is over, so it's time to take a deep dive into the show's final episode. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we'll be explaining the ending of Game of Thrones. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Obviously, if you haven't seen Season 8, Episode 6, The Iron Throne, there will be spoilers. I think we can all agree that ships take precedence over brothels. I think that's a very presumptuous statement. The episode begins in the aftermath of Daenerys' destruction of King's Landing. Tyrion, Jon, Davos, and a group of northern soldiers walk through the streets burning bodies and mourning survivors. Tyrion breaks from the group and heads to the Red Keep alone, hoping to find signs that Jaime and Cersei managed to escape. Instead, he finds their bodies crushed beneath fallen rubble. Tyrion breaks down, mourning the loss of his brother and sister. Meanwhile, Jon and his group encounter Grey Worm and his unsullied soldiers in the process of executing surviving Lannister troops. Things get heated when Jon tries to stop the execution. According to Grey Worm, he's acting on the specific orders of Queen Daenerys. Kill all who follow Cersei Lannister. Realizing that his actions could lead to the deaths of his men at the hands of the Unsullied, Jon stands down, and the Lannister soldiers are executed. Atop a large staircase in the ruins of King's Landing, Daenerys addresses her loyal soldiers. She thanks her Dothraki blood riders, who fulfilled the promise that Khal Drogo once made to their unborn son, Rhaego. She thanks Grey Worm and names him Master of War. Finally, she thanks the Unsullied, but adds that their war against tyranny is far from over. Daenerys' conquest does not end at Westeros. She wants to create a global empire and break the wheel. Hen winter velva dornot. Hen laneso valeniot. Hen gyro geerot. In the midst of all this celebration, Tyrion approaches his queen. Having freed his brother from captivity, he knows he no longer holds any favor with Daenerys and rather than accept his fate quietly, challenges her actions and rejects his position as her hand. You freed your brother. You committed treason. I freed my brother. And you slaughtered a city. Tyrion is promptly arrested and taken away by unsullied soldiers. Jon and Arya reunite atop the steps, Arya warns Jon that his queen will always see his claim to the Iron Throne as a threat to her position of power. I'm gonna know a killer when I see one. Jon visits Tyrion in his cell. Tyrion tries to convince Jon that he's the only one who can stop Daenerys. Jon resists and is seemingly not convinced, but Tyrion's parting words ring true. My sisters will be loyal to the throne. Why do you think Sansa told me the truth about you? Because she doesn't want Danny to be queen. She doesn't get to choose. No. But you do, and you have to choose now. Sansa and Arya would never bend the knee after what Daenerys did to King's Landing, which would make them a target. From there, Jon heads to the Red Keep to confront the Queen. In the throne room, Danny approaches the Iron Throne. The scene mirrors her vision from season two, a ruined throne room covered in what seemed to be snow. We now know that it's actually a mix of snow and ash. In her vision, Danny pulls away as she's about to touch the throne. But in this scene, she grasps it. The Seven Kingdoms are finally hers. Jon arrives in the throne room and argues with Daenerys about her actions. But Danny, convinced of her own goodness and righteousness, sees no fault in her destruction of King's Landing. Jon tried to make Danny see the light, and Jon failed. Seeing no other options, Jon drives a blade into his queen's chest as they embrace. Jon mourns the woman he loved as Drogon arrives. In a fit of rage, Drogon burns the Iron Throne, picks up the lifeless body of his mother, and flies off. Tyrion is taken from his cell to the Dragon Pit, where several Westerosi lords and ladies are meeting with Grey Worm to discuss terms. Following Daenerys' assassination, Jon was arrested by the Unsullied, and in the time since then, the Northern forces have surrounded the city. 
If you look outside the walls of your city, you'll find thousands of Northmen who will explain to you why harming Jon Snow is not in your interest. In trying to determine Jon's fate, Tyrion adds that the only person who can make that decision is the ruler of the Seven Kingdoms. And since that position is currently vacant after the deaths of both Cersei and Daenerys, the group agrees to pick a ruler then and there. Following some deliberation, Tyrion nominates Bran. As the Three-Eyed Raven, Bran has an unparalleled wealth of knowledge and wisdom. Since he can't have children, Bran's successor will be selected in a similar process, with the lords and ladies of Westeros deciding on a ruler together. Everyone seems in agreement, except for Sansa, who asks Bran to grant the North independence. Bran accepts and becomes the King of the Six Kingdoms. As for Tyrion, he's named Hand of the King despite not wanting the position. While Grey Worm initially protests, Bran convinces him by saying that Tyrion will spend the rest of his days fixing his mistakes. As for Jon Snow, Our new king has chosen to send you to the Night's Watch. I still Night's Watch. Grey Worm and the Unsullied decide to leave Westeros. Their destination? The Island of Noth, the birthplace of Missande, and the place she and Grey Worm were meant to sail once the war was over. My people are peaceful. We cannot protect ourselves. My people are not peaceful. We will protect you. John, Arya, Sansa, and Bran say their goodbyes. Sansa will return to Winterfell and establish their independence. Arya tells John she plans to sail west of Westeros to find uncharted lands. This is a callback to a conversation Arya had with Lady Crane back in season six. Where will you go? Essos is east, and Westeros is west. But what's west of Westeros? In their final interaction, Bran tells Jon that he was always exactly where he was supposed to be, hinting that this was always Jon's destiny. Not to rule the Seven Kingdoms, but to prevent it from falling into the hands of a tyrant. Brienne, now wearing the golden colors of the Kingsguard, looks through the Book of Brothers and finds Jamie's page. She fills in Jamie's honorable deeds from the last few years, including his role in the Battle of Winterfell. Tyrion hosts a small council meeting featuring Lord Bronn of Highgarden as Master of Coin, Samuel Tarly as Grand Maester, Sir Davos Seaworth as Master of Ships, and Sir Brienne of Tarth as Lord Commander of the Kingsguard. Podrick also makes an appearance, having been knighted and wearing Kingsguard armor. Sam presents Tyrion with the recorded history of the last few years of conflict in Westeros, and Tyrion is sad to learn that he isn't mentioned at all. Bran joins the meeting, but leaves shortly after to try and locate Drogon using his warging abilities. The rest of the small council discuss the best way to spend their resources. The series' final moments are presented as a montage. Jon arrives at the Wall and is reunited with Tormund and Ghost. Arya prepares to set sail with her crew, heading for the unknown. Sansa is officially named Queen in the North. Finally, Jon, Tormund, and the Free Folk head north beyond the Wall to return to the lands they were forced to abandon. The final scene mirrors the opening of the series, including a few identical shots, bringing the series full circle. this video and be sure to subscribe for more great content.